Welcome to a tutorial video on ink. In this video, I'm going to cover lists. Lists are a collection of variables. We see it here on line four. A list defined, all caps, similar to how we were creating variables and creating constants, we see list as a keyword. Then we see the name of the list, possible feelings. Then we see four values, happy, fretting, anxious, and panicking. Well, as I mentioned, a list is a collection of variables. So if these variables did not previously exist, the list will create them for us. Because they are possible values within the list, we can use them as values of variables. That is, we can set up a list of possible things like hot and cold, or frozen or solid, or liquid or gas, or things like that. In this case, we have feelings. We have four feelings. We can then use those, because they're part of that list, as values of other variables, which is what we're doing on line five. The variable feeling is equal to happy. Happy is part of a list of possible feelings. So one way we can use this, use lists then, is to create all the possible outcomes of something. Like I mentioned, conditions, solid or gas for physics, or in this case, feelings. So then we can set feelings to happy, and that's how we start this. As we go through though, we can change feeling, the variable, to different other possible feelings from that list. So we see down here with the tilde, we could increase fret count by one using the plus plus if we keep clicking on, did he even like guys? Otherwise, we can click on, I should just do it. And that will push us along in the story here through the flow. But notice right here, had I kept clicking on, did he even like guys, we could have increased the fret count. If we incre increase the fret count here, we see within these curly brackets the result of some outcome. The conditional within this is that if fret count is greater than two, the feeling changes, using the tilde here, from happy to fretting. Otherwise, it's back to happy. We also see this again much later in this, using as what was described in the previous video of tunnels and threads, to use the tunnel freak out to go to that knot and come back. And we're checking each time down here, freak out, defined initially on line 91. If we're freaking out, we're increasing freak out count by one using the tilde again, and we're getting the outcome of some conditional within these curly brackets. And the feeling could change, again, using the tilde to do some code. Feeling is set to panicking, or else feeling is set to anxious. Again, we're using lists as part of previous examples here, as using the tunnels and as I'm about to describe the thread, to check to see what the current feeling of the player is. And that's a reaction to if they are freaking out or not. That is, if we keep, keep repeating patterns in our head, we're increasing the freak out count, or if we're electing to identify that we are freaking out, we're also doing that. But all of these possible feelings were coming from the possible feelings list, defined at the very top here. We saw a list of our possible feelings are happy, fretting, anxious, or panicking. And so, like I mentioned, because those are created by the list, we can then use them as values. We can also see those values and show them as part of the story. So way down here into, if I can find it, food choices, we see it's now been extended from the previous video. When we talked about tunnels and threads, we talked about threads as being sort of the opposite of tunnels. That is, instead of going somewhere, it's pulling something in. So when we get to pizza choices, if we choose sushi here, we see these options, then we see the use of a thread pulling in the content of the not food choices. The content of food choices defined initially on line 79 is that it refers to the value of feeling. 
And so we can not only define a list of possible feelings or possible states, again, like hot and cold, things like that, but like we have here in this, we can define possible feelings as happy, anxious, panicking, fretting, things like that, and then use those values to adjust our current feeling to a, one of the possible feelings. And then we can show that value, the value of the variable, within food choices or by using curly brackets. So let's go to that point. Quickly skipping through here and choosing sushi. And we see because we did not freak out at any point, we didn't do the initial loops which would have increased the freak out count, nor did we choose any of the wrong food choices and elect to increase our freak out count, we get to the end and the value of the variable feeling is happy. Because it was set at the top, feeling equals happy, and then was reiterated because fret count was less than two. So again, lists are used here as creating a list of a sort of set of possible choices, possible categories, possible states. And then because we're using variables, we can set our value of a variable to one of those possible things. We use feelings in this example, and then we can change them back and forth among the possible feelings because the list will create them for us. So as a review, a list is a good way to create possible states. Things in this case like feelings, we could also use physics, we could use hot or cold, or other things like that. We can then use variables to set a variable to, the value, to one of the values of that list, one of the states of that list. We can also change them back and forth depending on other variables and use things like tunnels, in this case freak out to go and test that each time we get the choice of the food wrong, or threads to pull in the content of another knot to then check those and react to that content. Using a list as initially collecting all of the possible states together and then using a variable to select one of those states. Thanks for watching.